Practical Foundations uh, subject. And uh, in this subject, the chapter which we are going to cover now is Algebra. There are uh, quite a few uh, things uh, from our schooling world which uh, are required to be brushed up as a part of this particular uh, chapter including solving simultaneous equations, solving quadratic uh, equations. So a few uh, important uh, aspects uh, from the exam standpoint. So let's uh, look at uh, the various important uh, aspects that go as a part of this uh, chapter. Right. So let's get started. We are starting off with understanding the loss of indices. So there are three common laws. Probably if you go back to your schooling world, you can easily try to correlate these kind of laws. Let's say I have uh, x cube multiplied by x squared. So which is nothing but x to the power of a multiplied by x to the power of b. It works out to x to the power of a plus b. So 3 plus 2. I can very well write it as x to the power of 5. So whenever we see that uh, two different uh, numbers having the same base x, having the same base x are multiplied together, you can simply get their result by adding up their exponents. By adding up their uh, exponents, that would be the resulting result. So, this is uh, one of the important laws you can keep in mind. So, even if someone says uh, x to the power of 2a multiplied by x to the power of 4b, uh, it's uh, nothing but x to the power of 2a plus 4b. So, it can be used even for solving some kind of uh, unknowns. So it can be used for a lot of purposes, a simple addition of the exponents, right? So you remember that kind of a law. Then we are talking of the second law here, simply x to the power of a divided by x to the power of b. So again, the base remains the same for both of them, but the powers are different. Then that resultant works out to x to the power of a minus b, which is the subtraction between the two exponents. So if I say x squared divided by x cube, I will simply write it as x to the power of 2 minus 3 or x to the power of minus 1. Remember, x to the power of minus 1 can always be written as 1 by x to the power of 1 or which is nothing but 1 by x. So Probably I would like to add one more rule x to the power of minus n I can easily write it as 1 by x to the power of n. So probably you can remember this also as one of the rules which can help you for solving a lot of uh, calculations. Right. So uh, wherever you come across uh, such kind of a rule try to apply this kind of a formula and uh, you can simplify it in some cases. Now, one of the other important law of index which you should be comfortable with is whenever x to the power of a is raised to some other power, let's say b. So, x is first raised to a and that resultant, whatever x to the power of a is raised to the power of b, which means it is multiplied those many times which will work out to nothing but x to the power of just multiply the two exponents and remember it. So whenever I say x squared whole cube, which is nothing but x squared is multiplied three times, which is nothing but the exponents are added. So here the power is multiplied and makes it x to the power of 6. Remember, this is not the same as x to the power of 2 to the power of 3. Bracket makes a difference here. x squared when it is put in bracket and on the top of that there is a power, then only this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, simplification happens. But if let's say the same x, 2, 3 are put in this format without a bracket, the first way to simplify it is first simplify this uh, power separately. 2 cube is 8. So this becomes x to the power of 
8. So you have to remember this rule very carefully in this case. X to the power of A whole to the power of B is not the same as is not the same as X to the power of A to the power of B. The difference is only the bracket. So here it becomes X to the power of AB whereas here it becomes X to the power of A to the power of B. So you have to be careful with these two kind of calculations. So applying them in the real world when you come across the numericals of this kind is the key of understanding the law of indices. I hope you are comfortable with this uh, particular aspect. Try practicing a couple of numericals. Take some random numbers, x for 7 by x to the power of 3.5, whatever it is. All this works. It need not be the case that a and b are integers. No such rules. As long as the bases are same and they are multiplied, the exponents can be added. They are divided. The exponents can be subtracted. One is raised to the power of other. The exponents are directly multiplied. And please be aware that there is no such rule for x to the power of a plus x to the power of b. So only for multiplication, division and raising to the power you have these kind of law of indices. Don't get confused with that aspect there. Alright. Okay. So the next concept which we are looking at in this context is the logarithms. Logarithms are very closely linked with the law of indices. Logarithm is nothing but a simple way of writing. Let's say if x power a is some b. Then what we are saying is the exponent can be written as the logarithm of b to the base x. This is the kind of a relationship between the exponents and the indexes and the logarithms. So what it is telling me is this power is an important aspect in the logarithm. To what power a particular number needs to be raised in order to find out the logarithm. So when I say 10 squared equal to 100, we can simply say 2, which is the exponent, is equal to log 100 to the base 10. This is the way we are defining the logarithms. So logarithms as well as uh, the indices are linked in this particular manner. Now, what we are seeing is the base. Here the base is 10. Here the base is x. So any number can be the base. But the world of logarithms believes in two major bases to a large extent. So if the base is 10, we call them as common logarithms. And if the base is e, we have discussed about e to a large extent in our earlier chapters, 2.718. If the base is E, we call them as natural logarithms, right? So the most common in the financial world, the most common logarithms we talk of are E. So even in your calculators, they are mentioned separately under the name as LN. Whereas the common logarithms with a base 10 are mentioned with LOG. So that's one thing you have to understand as far as the logarithms is concerned. And just like you have three laws, three, three main laws with respect to indices, you have similar kind of laws with respect to logarithms also. And uh, those typical laws associated with the logarithms are a simple, probably I'll try to link them up with your indices formulas so let me let me try to link them up with the indices formulas so when you say as an indice for index formula x to the power of a 
into x to the power of b is equal to x to the power of a plus b. Now, the way it works out in case of logarithms is log x plus log y, whether it is ln or log doesn't matter, is equal to log xy. So here what you are seeing with respect to indices is if they are multiplied, you add up their exponents. Whereas here the two logarithms if they are added, whatever the be the base, let it be a or 2 or e or 10, whatever it is. If the bases are same, I add two logarithms, the result is the multiplication of those two values. That is what is the kind of relationship between the two. Similarly, x power a divided by x power b is what we said as x power a minus b. The same thing when I bring it into the logarithm world, log x by log, sorry, log x minus log y. So, whatever is uh, in the division form in the index that gets translated into the subtraction form and whatever is the subtraction form that gets translated into the division form. So, this is one more important rule as far as the logarithms is concerned. And the power rule, you can write it as log x to the power of n. If you, any base, base is anything, you write it as you bring the power to the front and you say n log.